Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Football Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Souza. I normally have my co-host with me, but today he is gone. So it would be just be me, myself, and I giving you fantasy football advice. Who to start, who to sit, injury news that you need to be aware of, situations that you need to monitor as you head into Sunday's games, strategies for the week, daily fantasy, season-long fantasy, We'll talk about certain players that I think are good plays this week. Of course, when I give my start and sit advice on each position, I'm looking at players that are normally not in the top 10, maybe in the top 15 at their position, depending on position. I'm looking more in that spot between maybe 10, 20, 10 to 25 for quarterback. When it comes to running back, maybe between 20 and 40 based on weekly rankings. Wide receivers, looking more in that 25 to 45, 25 to 50 type of range. There's more variance there. Tight end, maybe the toughest position in fantasy football to get consistency. I look more in like the uh, 8 to 15 range, as most leagues are 10, 12 team leagues for season long. We want to find, you know, who, what players that we can start because now we're approaching bye weeks. We have a lot of teams on buys. We have injuries. Uh, guys like Cooper Cup, they don't look like he's going to play. Le'Veon Bell still out. Allen Robinson looks like I don't think he's going to play. I would be, I would be pretty surprised if he does. So we'll start off with quarterbacks. And I'll try and do this, segment one, quarterback, segment two, running backs, three, wide receivers. And then the last segment, we'll do defenses and tight ends, considering there's less players to talk about. Maybe I'll throw in a kicker. Who knows? First quarterback I'd love to talk about today. <clears throat> Someone that I think has a really good matchup. Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, if he's available and you need a quarterback this week, please consider picking him up. He's at home against Tampa Bay. There is not a better defense in the NFL to face in terms of quarterbacks than Tampa Bay. You want to have the quarterback that faces Tampa Bay. Andy Dalton, he had a tough game last week. So I know your first, the last, a lot of people, they, um, have that recency bias. Like you think about what you saw last. Well, I'm telling you, forget it. The Kansas city game it was a primetime game. The Bengals laid an egg. Andy Dalton did not play well, but forget it. They're at home. So they're not on the road like they were against Kansas city. And as good as the Buccaneers offense has been, they're not Kansas City's offense. They don't run the ball particularly well. There should be a lot of big plays in this game. High scoring. And again, I know I've talked about this time and time again, but it's it's something to there's something to this. Like we we only talk about this because it's real. And that's you want players in games where there's a lot of expected points in fantasy football. 
For example, a game that I'll talk about and I'll point to later on in this show, Detroit and Seattle. It looks like that will be a low-scoring game. I would say you have to downgrade players for both of those teams. In this game, though, Cincinnati, Cincinnati's defense is not so great. They give up points. They give up yards. Not as much as Tampa, but still. We're looking at two offensive-minded football teams with great receiver play. And you're getting this game thinking, like, like uh, it would be shocking to me if this game isn't a shootout. The, the over-under right now in Vegas is 54.5, which means there's a lot of points. There's a lot of points out there. When you say 54 and a half, you're thinking pretty much both teams are going to have at least three touchdowns scored. I want as much action in this game as possible. So that goes for Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is a great play this week again. Seems like whoever the quarterback is in Tampa Bay is just going to put up numbers. Even if Winston gets hurt and Fitzpatrick comes in down the road, we already saw what he did in the first couple games. So, I like both these quarterbacks. I hate both these defenses. Don't play these defenses. Uh, not that anybody would consider that anyways, but you know what I mean. So, you have to like what you see. You have to like what you see on paper between these two teams. Andy Dalton. I have him in the top 10 this week for quarterbacks. I have Winston and Dalton in the top 10. So, it should be... Should be a shootout. You want these players. Let's move on to another quarterback that I find very interesting this week, and that's Joe Flacco. I know. I know what you're thinking. Very uninspiring pick. Flacco doesn't light it up. He had three touchdown passes once this year. Same number of times he's had zero. He's had two games with one. Three games with two. He's been pretty good at keeping the ball. Only four picks, one fumble. But I like Joe Flacco because I like the Ravens to control this game. Their defense is very good at blitzing. Cam Newton's not very good at attacking defenses that blitz him. So I think the Ravens' defense will force turnovers and three and outs. I like them to have the ball control in this game. And with the trio of wide receivers and John Brown, Michael Crabtree, and Willie Sneed, I like Flacco's ability to throw for a couple touchdown passes. I don't think he'll be a boom this week. If you're looking for a guy uh, to go up and put 30 to 40 fantasy points, if you're looking at your matchup with your opponent in your league and you're like, oh, man, I really need like a, like a lottery ticket here, I wouldn't say Joe Flacco. But if you're somebody who says, I could really use 20 to 25, a consistent game, because maybe the other players on my fantasy team are being relied upon to carry the heavy lifting. Guys like Kareem Hunt, guys like, uh, I don't know, Todd Gurley. Like, if you have these players and you're looking for, I need a quarterback that I'm fairly confident that won't lay an egg today. Joe Flacco might be that guy. He, he can have games where he doesn't perform very well, but he's had... Two games under 17 points, fantasy points, this year. He's had four games over 20. Two over 25. I think he's safe for 20. 20 to 25 range, I think, is a sweet spot for him. Um, he He's just, uh, he's in, he's a, like I said, like if you're looking for a lottery ticket, he's not your guy. If you're looking for a consistent play, He's going up against the 18th ranked defense, so Carolina is not the worst defense in the world. But still. So, my last quarterback that I that I think is a good start this week, somebody you can find off the waiver wire, somebody who's available. That's Case Keenum. He's facing the 25th ranked defense for Kansas City, and that's actually an improvement. That team was last, but they've moved on up. Kansas City just held Andy Dalton to a very poor game. Really good defensive performance by KC, which was unlike any of their defensive performances from before in any other week this year. 
Do I expect the Chiefs to win this game? Absolutely. But I expect the Denver Broncos to be behind by one or multiple scores for most of this game. And with that being said, Emmanuel Sanders has been playing lights out for Denver. Corlin Sutton has the ability to make some plays, especially in the red zone. I just think that you're going to have the the chance here to have a quarterback playing from behind. You want a shootout scenario. Yes, Keenum could put up a dud. He absolutely could. But he's been he's been good as of late. Now, last game against Arizona, he only had 161 yards and a touchdown and a pick. But that game was kind of an abomination. We saw we saw Arizona just fall on their own sword. Um, they didn't have to throw very much for Denver. They didn't have to toss the ball around too much. We saw Emmanuel Sanders actually throw a touchdown pass, which is weird. But um, this won't be that game. We won't see Casey throw two pick sixes and lose by 30 points. So in the two previous games for Keenum, last week he only put up 10.8. But the two previous games, he had faced the Jets and the Rams. Both have better defenses than the defense he'll be facing this week. 377, two touchdowns and a pick against the Jets. 322, two touchdowns and a pick against the Rams. That's 25 and 23 fantasy points, respectively. Um, yeah, I like Keenum to get at least 20 fantasy points because I think the game script will warrant him to throw at least 40 times this game. Even if he's dumping the ball off to Philip Lindsay, it really doesn't matter. But KC... They have problems defending the pass. They still do, despite what they did last week against the Bengals. I think that's a solid play. I think you could do much worse. I think you could do much worse than playing Case Keenum. Uh, one guy that I really don't like this week, and I know that most people will play him because he's been having a great season. Cam Newton. I know. His last three games off of bye... Actually, before the bye, we'll just, I'll just run through it. 18 points, 33, 33, 20, 27, 29. So he's been in the upper 20s the last two games. He faced Washington and Philadelphia. He faced the Giants before. The reason why I don't think he's a good play this week, and I'm not saying to completely bench him, I think if you, if you can bench him for an Andy Dalton or a Winston, I would do it. I'm not so sure I'd play him over Flacco. Or Case Keenum, but if you have another good quarterback, you might want to consider benching Cam Newton. And the fact is, is that Baltimore is a very good team. Baltimore's defense is a very good team. I talked about how Cam Newton is a subpar quarterback against the Blitz. And the Ravens blitz at an incredible rate, the highest in the NFL. If they blitz them all game and they have that ball control offense with Joe Flacco and those receivers in the short passing game, we could see Cam Newton's opportunities be limited. We could see a low scoring game. We could see a game 23, 20, something like that. I, th I see a game that will be under 45, 46 points. Now, I absolutely could be wrong about that, but you tell me. You think this game will be high scoring? Because I don't. Baltimore is the second best fantasy football defense against the pass. It's just not a good day. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe Cam Newton will have a good game, but the upside there is very limited. So let's move on. My next two quarterbacks that I don't like happen to be playing each other this week. So first off, I'll start with Matt Stafford. So Stafford and Russell Wilson are the two, in case you uh, couldn't figure that one out. Um, Stafford, believe it or not, believe it or not, the number one pass defense in fantasy football is the Seattle Seahawks. The Legion of Boom is no longer, but the pass defense has remained the same. Stafford's averaging 21 points a game. He's been under 20 only once. In the last four games. He's pretty good for 21-22 a game. In fantasy. I don't like the upside here. 
as I think that this game will be low scoring. Russell Wilson, too. Russell Wilson has a little bit easier of a matchup as Detroit is 17th against passing quarterback. So Russell Wilson hasn't been running the f- football with his legs. He's been throwing a lot. He has had two good games, 25 and 26 fancy points, respectively. Uh, other than that, he's been under 23 times. He's been in the mid-20s three times. He's been consistent as of late. But with the Lions, the Lions have found that they can run the football. Carry on Johnson with Garrett Blunt. I expect them to run the football. You're looking at a team that used to be a heavy pass-oriented team. They're more 50-50. I could even see them being over 50% run. Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks are definitely over 50% run. No one in the league runs more than them. That's limited Russell Wilson's fantasy output this year. He does have three touchdown passes in his last two games. But this game should not be terribly high scoring, in my opinion. Anything can happen. But I don't like either quarterback in this matchup. Again, I think if you're looking for... I think if you're looking for a player to be safe in this matchup, I would say go with Wilson. I think Stafford... He's, he, Stafford is a good quarterback, but he does, I think, in this matchup, have the ability to be the one that you know has a bad game, throws a, a multiple interceptions, uh, things like that. But I would just stay away from both of these. And going back to Cam Newton... He is a little banged up as well. So that's another reason to downgrade him to maybe a QB2 this week against Baltimore and not a QB1. But that's it for my quarterback start and sit. So again, my starts, Dalton, Winston, Flacco, Keenum, sits, Newton, Stafford, Wilson. When I come back, I'm going to talk to you about the running back position, the one that's the bane of our existence as fantasy football fans as we talk about the most injury-filled position in fantasy football, the one that gives us the most headaches, running backs. I'll do that when I return. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. If this is your first time here, or if you don't know, you can find our football podcast in the GSMC Podcast Network. So take a look at that if you're interested in the breakdown of each game that will be happening this weekend. But we'll be talking about now the running back position. A lot of injuries. Some key bye weeks. Who should you play? Where's the value? Oh, I'm here to tell you. So, this segment can get a little unpopular here as I will tell you about a few players that might be really risky, but if you think about it logically, it might not be so risky. I'll start off in Tampa Bay. We talked about in the last segment wanting Dalton and Winston. You want the players in that game because it should be high scoring. There should be a lot of value there. The defenses are not very good. Ronald Jones, the rookie from USC. He scores a touchdown last week. His first one of the season, six carries, 13 yards, and a touchdown. I know what you're thinking. 
Why? He's had three points, three points, and nine. Because Peyton Barber might be a non-factor this week. Because Peyton Barber is fighting an injury, and Ronald Jones has been taking the first team reps all week in practice. Now, it sounds like Peyton Barber will play, but he has an ankle sprain. And Ronald Jones is more dynamic. And Ronald Jones should be the running back that catches passes out of the backfield. I want that guy. I Like I told you, if you need a running back this week, if you have one on by, I think you could do worse than getting a guy like Ronald Jones in your starting lineup. It... It's not the worst idea ever, even if you look at if you look at the numbers, you know, you might get grief about it. But if you play him and he gets you 10, 15, 20 points, you'll look like a genius. He's playing the 27th ranked fantasy defense against the run in Cincinnati. He has the ability to catch passes. He caught six passes last week for... Excuse me, he got one pass for 15 yards, three the previous week. His role is growing. He was about 50% snaps last week. Like I said, Peyton Barber, he's injured. He might play. But I expect Ronald Jones to get most of the snaps. I think he's good for three or four catches, 10 attempts running the football. 13 to 15 touches I think is a solid line for a streaming running back that you need. Another running back that I'd like to talk about is Mark Ingram. I know what you're thinking. Oh, I was planning on starting him anyways. Well, five fantasy points last week. I say do not be alarmed. He was playing Baltimore. Baltimore is tough against running backs. Minnesota this week. Now, I like this game to be high scoring, whereas... The Ravens game, you could kind of see that that game was going to be limited in points. But not this game. The Vikings-Saints has all the promise of a big-time scoring football game. And Mark Ingram, he might be able to get a couple touchdowns on the ground. Now, the Vikings are the seventh-ranked defense against the running backs. But, again, I like the offense to move the ball up and down the field. But with the Saints... We know they like to run the football near the goal line. Michael Thomas is really their only receiver that is a red zone threat. They like to use their running backs when they get closer to the goal line. So I can see Ingram scoring a touchdown. He has a possibility of two just because of the game. I mean, if you plan on the Saints scoring over 30 points, there's probably four to six touchdowns that will be scored in this game. Pretty sure that you can count on Ingram for at least one, at least in normal situations. So... I say start him with confidence, even though it might not be the best matchup that there is. It might not be the most intriguing matchup. But sometimes you got to look past the rankings or the uh, research and see, you know, yes, this team is good against the run, but how will this game go? Will my guy be able to get an advantageous number of catches, carries, targets, etc.? My next start. Is Latavius Murray, I know, again, he's coming off two big games where he struggled initially against the Saints. But I think you got to start him again. Um, if you start him the last two games, he's rewarded you. The Saints are the third against running backs in fantasy. But, again, we just talked about with Ingram. Similar, similar situations here. High-scoring game. If they get the ball inside the five-yard line two to three times, you expect a touchdown from the running backs. And if it's a running back, then it's Latavius Murray from Minnesota. So I think I think he's a really good play. Um, I'm playing against him this week. I'm hoping that my opponent doesn't start him. He's currently on my opponent's bench. Because I do think he's good for 15 fantasy points. Just by volume alone, should have a touchdown. Now I want to talk about a player, a running back that you should start that's very unpopular. It has been someone who has given you a lot of grief if you own this player. That's Jordan Howard. I'll tell you why. 
Jordan Howard coming off a game where he did score a touchdown. He got 11 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. His biggest game is 15. He's had three games under eight, three games over 10. It's not what you paid for when you, when you drafted him in the second round of your drafts. If you got him in the third round, congrats. Cause you hopefully got two better players before him, but 12 for 39 and touchdowns, not exactly what you wanted to see last week, but he scored. So, Against the Jets. The Jets are 15th against the run, or I should say against running backs in fantasy football. The Bears are at home. I, With the Jets having some injury issues, Bilal Powell's out, that some defensive players are out. I just like what I see in this offense for Chicago to control this game, to be winning. I think they'll be leading in this game. And when you lead in a game, you lean on your run. And when you lean on the run, you lean on Jordan Howard. Tariq Cohen has been the guy in Chicago, but he's more of the pass-catching back, big play running back. But I see Jordan Howard getting close to 20 carries in this game just because of the game script. Last week he got 12, and they were trailing for mo- much of that game. I see a similar game where they played Arizona earlier this year where he had 24 carries. And he's, he's good for at least 15 carries, good for the red zone runs, and of course... If they're winning in that game, second half, he can chew up some yards for you, get you some cheap points at the end. I like Jordan Howard. I think he'll get at least 13 fantasy fo- fantasy points this week. He's an interesting an interesting play for, for people. I know, I know the people that have him are like, oh, man, every time I play him, he burns me. But I think this is the one the one game where you can, you can rely on his production. So I wanted to talk about... Who you shouldn't start? What players should you avoid? And what players are injured, injury situations to monitor? First sit, I have Doug Martin. He is now, uh, we presume he's a starter in Oakland now that Marshawn Lynch is out for the season on IR. I just don't think this offense is good. I don't think Doug Martin's good. He hasn't been good for years now. He hasn't been good this year. I mean, he's averaging less than three yards a carry. He's not very productive in the pass passing game. He has four receptions on the air. I think he'll get the ball 10 to 15 times. It's him and Jalen Richard, but I think Jalen Richard is a much better play because of his pass catching ability. Doug Martin. I don't see much upside here. If you're just looking for six to eight points, go ahead and play him. If you're looking for a decent fantasy game, I say decent, like I'd say 10, 11 plus. Jalen Richard. Jalen Richard should be the one from the Oakland backfield that you want. Um, and that Raiders team is just a mess right now. They they have a lack of talent. Trading Cooper, I mean, Jordy Nelson, Martavis Bryant don't exactly strike fear into opponents. So the Colts will be able to stop the run. They'll be able to focus on the line of scrimmage. So I say don't play him. Don't play him at all. Um, Before I move on, yeah, Jalen Richard. I say Jalen Richard all day. So moving on. The Jacksonville Jaguars defense or excuse me, running backs. Uh, I, I say defense because that's all they have in Jacksonville. And now that they have Carlos Hyde and TJ Eldon, I think it kills both players' fantasy values this week. I say that because I don't like where that offense is going in terms of controlling the ball. I think their defense will be on the field a lot in this game. But now you just mud- muddied the backfield there with uh, Carlos Hyde. For Nets out. But for we don't know what the split will look like. I, I'm assuming that Yeldon will be in the game more than Hyde because he's been there longer. Hyde's been there for about a week now. He's learning the playbook. He probably has a number of plays that he's going to be going in, but Yeldon should get the third down work. I just think that this game script would probably lean Yeldon, but I would not start either if I have a better option. If I have a running back on my bench that's maybe – a clear number one running back for their respective team. Maybe he doesn't possess 
a ton of upside, but I'd rather have that person. I'd rather have that player. I don't think it's close, to be honest. I think you have to wait and see with this Carlos Hyde, TJ Yeldon situation. You don't want a situation where you play Hyde or Yeldon and one of them gets you three or four fantasy points and you lose. So I say wait and see. Unfortunately, it hurts both of them. Uh, another player that will be a popular play this week is uh, Bilal Powell. I say do not play Bilal, or excuse me, Isaiah Crowell. Don't play Powell because Powell is on IR, so d- definitely don't play him. But Isaiah Crowell is a player that will be a popular play in daily fantasy, in season long. People will say, oh, uh, Bilal Powell's on IR. Isaiah Crowell should reap the benefits. But I don't think his role changes much. I really don't. We saw Powell get a little bit more of the snaps, the receiving work. Crowell isn't a guy who's a danger in the passing game. He has the most he has uh, in any game receiving wise is two, two catches. So I see uh, the young running back, Trent Cannon, taking the third down pass game work. And I, I see a game where the Jets will be struggling and they'll be playing from behind. So I could see a game where Crowell actually gets out touched by Trent and Cannon, which would be devastating if you're a Crowell owner. I mean, if we're looking at Crowell, he has one game over 100 yards and one game over 200 yards. Other than that, he has 40 yards or less in every single game. He is the definite, he's like the Ted Ginn of running backs. He will either go off or he will just be a dud. And I think the game script, I just have a bad feeling about him this weekend. So he's definitely somebody that I would downgrade. If you have a better option, consider that person, consider that player. I would honestly, I would start Jordan Howard, Ronald Jones. I would start them over Crowell. I just think that the upside is so much better. Uh, I understand with Jones, with Ronald Jones, you have, you know, you have that risk of maybe he gets one or two fantasy points, but I feel like Crowell's risk is three or four fantasy points. I mean, look how many games he has 40 yards or less. Take the upside. Plus, Ronald Jones can catch a pass. So, injury situations to monitor. This is interesting here. As um, I have three written down. I'm sure there's more, but uh, Matt Breida, 49ers. We know that the Niners possess offensive running back value in fantasy football with Kyle Shanahan as their coach. Breida is coming off the ankle. He's still injured with the ankle. He he did practice. He didn't practice this week. He's been up and down. I would pick up uh, Raheem Mostert if you haven't yet. Mostert has carved out a role for sure uh, in this in this team. Even if Breed is healthy, uh, Mostert, I don't know if he's start worthy, but he's definitely carved out a role here. So. The Cardinals are the worst defense against running backs in the NFL and fantasy football. You want the running back in this game, whether it's Brita or Mostert. Uh, it probably is a low-scoring game, but again, the Niners use their running backs to catch the ball. It looks like Pierre Garçon will not play for the 49ers, so they might throw a few extra passes in the possession game. In the uh, As we know, uh, Pierre Garçon is a possession type receiver so if he's out you have Goodwin but Goodwin's more the big play guy the running back whether it's Breed or Mostert have more action might have more action as a receiver so be aware of the situation there but if you get Mostert then you can you can wait until the inactives and actives are released and if Breed is inactive you start Mostert so um, a situation to think about there another player was Sean McCoy I don't I would not play him at all. It sounds like he's still I mean he still is in the concussion protocol. He practiced today in a non-contact jersey. I just don't like this matchup. First off, it's Monday night, so you're going to have to make this decision on him before they make a decision on him, which I never like in fantasy. And I know Chris Ivory was a popular claim on the waiver wire this week 
But I don't like any running back in this game for the Bills. I think they're getting blown out by the Patriots. I just don't see a game where the running back has a big game for Buffalo. We have another game with a backup quarterback in Buffalo against Tom Brady and the Patriots on Monday night. That is that is bad news, so stay away from McCoy. The last player that I want to talk about in terms of should you start him, should you sit him because of his injury, Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson, the pass-catching running back for Washington, he, it sounds like he's a game-time decision. He has ribs and a knee injury. He's just a small running back. He was hurt last year. He gets hurt a lot. Um, I just say stay away from him, even if he plays. He has multiple injuries. He hasn't been practicing. I know that he, if he plays, they're playing the 22nd-ranked defense against the pass, or against running backs, excuse me. I know that you're thinking, oh, if he's healthy, I have to play him. I don't think so. I think you can do better here. Do not play him. So I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'll talk about the wide receivers. The wide receivers, who should I start, who should I sit, and also injury news. So I'll do that when I right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Thank you for staying with me here in the Fantasy Football Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. Again, I'm your host, Mark Souza. If you haven't checked out our other podcasts, please do so, the GSMC Podcast Network. So, let's talk wide receivers now. Who should you start? Who should you sit this weekend? Talk about injuries. First off, Amari Cooper. He's now a Dallas Cowboy. Do not play Amari Cooper until he shows you that he will... First off, play. I mean, I'm sure we'll see him in the game this week, but how many plays will that be? Wide receiver is a tough position to transition to in the NFL when you go from team to team. Every team has different concepts, different language, and how they run plays. There's a lot of option routes in offenses nowadays, which makes it difficult for a quarterback to trust a receiver who's been there for five days. So I would wait on Cooper, sit him on your bench, Wait till he has a big game. And then maybe you can play him consistently from there on out. Although, I'm not the biggest fan of his outlook, to be honest with you. In fact, I would say if he has a big game here in the next week or two for the Cowboys, trade him as soon as, as possible. Just because that's not a, a high-powered offense. It's not a high-powered passing offense. And I expect him to have struggles with Dak Prescott, similar to his struggles with Derek Carr. One player I do want to talk about starting this week, Geronimo Allison for Green Bay. Packers should be playing in a shootout game. Aaron Rodgers likes to throw the ball. He loves to throw the ball to Allison when he's healthy. Sounds like Geronimo Allison will play. It also sounds like Randall Cobb will play, but I don't think Randall Cobb's ability, um, availability excuse me, should affect how you feel about Geronimo Allison. We are talking about a guy who in his four games had at least 10 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. We're talking about a guy that had you know, an average of eight to nine targets a game. I want that all day. I want Aaron Rodgers' second favorite receiver. Devontae will get his. The ball will be spread out. We know how good of a quarterback Rodgers is. We know how good he is at 
throwing people open all day. Emmanuel Sanders, number two. He's number three ranked receiver in the NFL right now. I, I Of course, you were going to start him no matter what, but I expect him to have a big game. Kansas City should be a shootout. Broncos should lose, but they should put up some points. Emmanuel Sanders, he's having a great season. You could say arguably the the most unlikely player in the top 10 in fantasy football. That's um That would be Emmanuel Sanders. We, I didn't see that coming. I knew that he'd be pretty decent. Their passing game would be uh, better, of course, with Case Keenum, but very good. Another player that I think should be on your radar if you need a receiver in a pinch, Tyler Boyd. He put up a dead game last week, but that whole offense did for Cincinnati. We talked about Tampa Bay and Cincinnati. You want these players. You want the receivers in this game. Tyra Boyd, he's had games of 18, 22, 15, and 21. Yeah, he's had three games under six. But the fact is, Dalton throws him the football. They lost Eifert. He should see the second most targets on the team behind A.J. Green. I'd say you get 8 to 10 targets here. 8 to 10 targets against the Buccaneer defense should get you some fancy points. I'd say at least 10 points. If he scores, you're looking at 15-16. Another receiver that I'd like to talk about, Traquan Smith. I know he's risky. But when we look at it, he played in 80% of the snaps last week for, uh, for, for the New Orleans Saints. And... Traquan Smith, I mean, he is their new Ted Ginn. Michael Thomas will be the focal point of that passing game, of course. But if teams start focusing on him, that leads other targets. And we know that uh, that Traquan Smith, he can be a game-breaking player. He scored those two touchdowns, including Drew Brees' record-breaking touchdown pass. He had six targets last week, a bump from three. So his volume is going up. Should be another shootout type game this week. Minnesota is pretty good against the pass. Their defense is pretty good, but you got to think if they can hit Traquan on one or two deep ones, he's got a chance to to really help you this week. If you have a player on a bye, a player on an injury, guys like Allen Robinson who are hurt, I think you got to pick him up. Another injury, Cooper Cup, most likely not playing. So you know, that's a player that. If you're looking to replace him for a week, Traquan Smith, you could have worse plays than that. How about Martavis Bryant? Martavis Bryant, somebody has to catch the ball for the Oakland Raiders. I mean, we we know that Amari Cooper is gone. So all these targets have to go to Jordy and Martavis. I don't think the Raiders are going to run the football very well with Doug Martin. I think Doug Martin's a big downgrade from Marshawn Lynch. They'll have to throw it. They'll have to chuck it. Might be losing this game. Andrew Luck and the Colts offense has the ability to score points. So this might be a shootout. A lot of potential here. I know that Martavis Bryant isn't popular, but I think Jordy Nelson's most likely on rosters. I would play both of them. But you're looking at a guy who should see at least 8 to 10 targets. I just don't see how the Raiders... I, I expect Jared Cook to be thrown to a ton by Derek Carr. Jared Cook will probably be the focal point of that passing game, but he's a tight end. You got to throw the ball outside. You got to throw the ball down the field. I really like Martavis Bryant this week. Another player that I really like this week is Doug Baldwin. Even though it's a low, it should be a low scoring game, a low scoring affair between the Lions and the Seahawks. Doug Baldwin, he will be matched up with Tease Tabor who? Yes, exactly. The slot corner for Detroit. Darius Slay does not usually cover the slot receiver. He is the Lions' best cover corner. I expect him to be on uh, Tyler Lockett on the outside. Doug Baldwin in the slot should have the favorable matchup. I can see him. I don't know if he'll score, but I can see Doug Baldwin being peppered with targets in this game. He is coming off 12 fantasy points. We had eight targets. I wouldn't be surprised if he had at least 10 targets. I'd say probably more like 12 targets. Uh, if you get eight or nine catches, it's pretty rewarding in itself. If he scores, great. 
uh, I'm not so sure if Doug Baldwin possesses any um, huge upside in terms of he's coming off that injury this year. I don't know if he's fully healthy. Maybe his explosiveness is down, but maybe he got some of it back during that bye week. His best game was against the Raiders in the previous week. So I look for Doug Baldwin to have a good game. If you're playing daily fantasy, you might want to consider putting him on your roster for this week. Now we'll go to sit. Receivers that we need to downgrade. First one, Allen Robinson. Sounds like he will not play. He's got a groin injury. I just don't like him having that injury, him being inconsistent in this offense, which is weird because this offense has gotten better, but his numbers have not. His numbers have gotten worse. He was uh, sidelined on Thursday with that groin injury. And... I just think that this game, when I look at this game, Jets and Bears, it just feels like a game where the Bears are going to have the lead and just lean on the run, lean on Jordan Howard in the second half. So I don't like Allen Robinson, even if they give him a go. Groin injury is no joke. He hasn't been consistent. Downgrade him, sit him. <clears throat> at this point, you might consider just get rid getting rid of him if he's on your roster season long. So, um, Another receiver that I really don't like this week is Devin Funches. Yeah. He is the best receiver that the Panthers have. But again, he's facing the Ravens. Very good defense. I just think that Cam Newton will be frustrated in this game. The one saving grace is that I think Funches should have 10, 11 targets. But if you're looking for 16, 17 fantasy points, I think you need to look elsewhere. I think we're looking at a guy that can get five or six catches for 40, 50 yards. But again, it's a game that I think will be low scoring. I think Baltimore will control the clock. I could be wrong. Absolutely. It's just, I just don't have too much confidence in Devin Funches this week. Randall Cobb. Now I know you're saying, oh, but that game should be high scoring. Rams and Packers. Cobb is playing. I know. I understand all that. But Randall Cobb, to me, is the fourth best receiver for the Packers in this game, even if he plays, which it sounds like he will. I like Jimmy Graham in the red zone. Of course, da Devontae Adams in the red zone and all over the field, as he's Aaron Rodgers' favorite target. And Geronimo Allison getting over 20% of the targets when he plays. We've we've seen Randall Cobb play a few games, but he's been out for a considerable amount of time. He had a big first game. Other than that, four points, three points. I mean, he's getting four or five receptions, 30, 35 yards. I just don't see an explosive receiver. I see a guy who can be a possession receiver. I don't like him to score in this game. It's just uh, with the injury... And with the volatile stat lines that we've seen from him so far this season, I'd say you should downgrade him. Don't play him. Also, another player I don't like this week is Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon is also a little banged up. But it's mostly the matchup that I don't like. Tredavis White, he might be called upon to shadow Josh Gordon. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it definitely could be. But Josh Gordon also has a hamstring injury. He's limited. Yes, he's in a Tom Brady offense, but if we think this game is going to be a blowout, which I think most people expect the Bills to not be able to score too many points, we expect the Patriots to run away with this. I think that he's a terrible play in terms of upside because if he's not involved in some of those early scores, you can see – the Patriots benching him in the second half because they're winning by so much and they want to save him. You know, the Patriots are thinking about bigger things rather than one game. They're thinking about being healthy, thinking about the playoffs. So they're not thinking about your fantasy team. With that being said, you might want to consider uh, Kenyon Barner for running backs to add because he might get a lot of run in the second half of that game. Another player that I want to talk about to sit is Tyler Lockett. I just talked about why Doug Baldwin should be start uh, should be a start for you. 
sit Lockett because if Darius Slay does stay on the outside, he'll be matched up with Tyra Lockett. And that's a that's a bad matchup for Tyro Lockett. Um, he's been good all season, but I think we'll see better days for him at other times. Um, it's just the matchup, low scoring game. It, it should be, I would expect. So, I say no. And of course, I talked about it, but Cooper Cup's not going to play. Um, again, if you have him and you're looking for someone else, Geronimo Allison, Tyro Boyd, Traquan Smith, Martavis Bryant, those guys should be available. At least one of them. I would take a flyer on one of those guys. Of course, uh, Bucks players like Godwin. You should definitely play Godwin. Um, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, other than that, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to tell you about some defenses to stream, some tight ends to, to stream, and which big-time tight end you should consider sitting on your bench. I'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. SMC Fantasy Football Podcast, of course. I'm back with you, Mark Souza. Last segment of the day. Talk about defenses and tight ends. Let's jump into it. Redskins defense. I like them this week. I think you you can consider starting them uh, for for your team if you're looking for a streaming option. I am a fan of streaming defenses. I don't put a lot of stock into defenses during drafts. I like to wait till people drop good defenses when they need to. And also, I like to start off with defenses who have good uh, season outlooks. For example, I targeted the Ravens defense in almost every league this year because they opened up the season against some really bad quarterbacks. They started off against Josh Allen and uh, Tyrod Taylor. So I targeted them. It worked out for me. They ended up be- being a very good defense. I knew they were a g- good defense previously, but it, they had a lot of upside there. They're a defense I've kept on my roster mostly. But um, if you're looking for a defense to stream, you got to love the Redskins. They face the Giants this week. The Giants, turnover prone. Eli gets sacked. Gives They give up a lot of sacks. Josh Norman should be all over Odell. Can the Giants score points? Absolutely. Actually, they actually do have problems scoring points, but they have the ability. They they have big time players. Saquon Barkley. It might scare you, you know, Barkley, Odell, Sterling Shepard, but it shouldn't because that offensive line is terrible. They give up sacks. When you get sacks, you get big plays. When you get sacks, you get picks. You get fumbles. You get defensive touchdowns. The Giants. They're very generous to opposing defenses. I would consider starting Redskins defense, even though. They're not a great defense. There's a lot of value here. So you should look into it. So another defense that, you know, maybe maybe they haven't got the respect as they should. But the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts defense. They've had four games this year over 14 fantasy points. They just came off a game where they had 25 fantasy points against the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, we can agree they're a terrible de- or a terrible offense, but the Oakland Raiders this week, no Amari Cooper, no Marshawn Lynch. So we talked about Martavis Bryant being a decent streamer because of volume. Bryant and Jordy Nelson don't strike fear in the opposition. Jared Cook, he is a player to watch in this game, fantasy-wise, but I don't like their running game. I don't think they'll run the ball very well. Raiders, uh, Derek Carr, we've seen him timid quarterback play. We've seen him turn the ball over. 
We just haven't seen his killer instinct. We haven't seen him take shots downfield or make big plays. I just like the Colts in this game to hold on to a lead, maybe have the opportunity to create some turnovers in in the passing game. So they're definitely an option for you if you need a defense in a pinch. Look for the Colts. We'll talk about some defenses that I think that you should sit this week. And so if you have one of the defenses that you should sit, consider starting these. How about the 49ers and the Cardinals defense? We're talking about two terrible teams. We're talking about two offenses that are not good. Well, the Cardinals offense hasn't been good. The 49ers offense actually puts up points and and numbers, but they also turn the ball over a lot, including when they turned the ball over five times against Arizona a couple weeks ago. I like Arizona's defense a little bit better, but, I mean, can you dislike the 49ers defense against Josh Rosen, a new offense coordinator in his first NFL game calling plays? There's a lot of value there. The 49ers defense is not very good, but neither is the Cardinals offense. And when you look at defenses, especially streaming, you're mostly looking at the offenses. You're not really concerned about how good or bad that defense is that you're starting. You're concerned about how much of an advantage you can gain. We see it with the Buffalo Bills. <coughs> They're like the gift that keeps on giving. Nathan Peterman, Derek Anderson. Anytime you can get a defense against that team, doesn't matter if that defense is good. You want to play those quarterbacks. You look to target teams that have problems protecting the quarterback or quarterbacks that have problems throwing the ball to their guys and not the opposition. So uh, defense you should consider sitting is Minnesota. They play against Drew Brees. Minnesota's defense has rebounded well as of late. They've been putting up a lot of good numbers fantasy-wise, but New Orleans, I just hate playing a defense against Drew Brees. He's too smart. Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas are too good. This team just does so much offensively that even if you're a good defense like Minnesota, I don't expect Minnesota to have more than seven fantasy points. Another defense is the Rams defense. Again, they're facing Aaron Rodgers. I think it'll be a shootout. Can the Rams get some sacks? Yeah. But I would expect the Packers to have a conservative passing game plan where they're throwing the ball quick. Maybe more of a ball possession type game because they don't want to go toe-to-toe with the Rams. You don't want to get into a you know, slug fest with the Rams. You want to control the game. You want to move the sticks and be efficient in the red zone. With that being said, Aaron Donald, great game last week. The Rams defense does have the ability to rush a passer, but Aaron Rodgers is smart. He gets the ball out quick. I don't think it's the worst play, but I think there's much better plays than the Rams. I would definitely consider Redskins, Colts, 49ers, or Cardinals defense over the Rams and Vikings. Last one is Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I don't trust that offense. That's why I don't trust their defense. They're playing against Philadelphia. Again, Wentz, smart quarterback. I just think that Jacksonville's defense will will get shredded fantasy football-wise because their offense is so bad they can't sustain drives. At some point, we know the offenses have, have the advantage in football when it comes to how the rules are. So you put your defense on the field a ton. I don't care what defense it is. I don't want that defense on the field. They're not playing against a bad quarterback. They're not playing a mistake-prone quarterback. I say sit Jacksonville. Some tight ends that you should consider streaming this week Chris Herndon New York Jets he's a guy that has over 12 fantasy points in his last two games seven targets last week up from two the week before two touchdowns in those games they really like him in New York now with uh, Powell injured I think that they'll have to throw the ball to receivers and tight ends a little bit more as they really don't have a established third down running back. They have Trent Cannon who will get to play, but we don't know how good he is or how much they'll trust him. Chris Herndon is definitely a, a tight end you should consider adding for this week, especially in a game where they probably will be playing from behind. So look for him. In red zone, He's a, he's been getting the looks. Ben Watson, New Orleans, another one that I think – should be available in most leagues. Um, he He's a guy that he's about 50% owned. He doesn't wow a lot of people, but you know he had a good game last week, six 
targets, six catches, a touchdown. He's very good at catching the passes that are thrown his way. High scoring game, Minnesota. They're usually they're usually all right against tight ends, but um, you know you could see them leaving Ben Watson uncovered or something like that because they're so focused on uh, Ingram, Thomas, uh, Kamara, etc. So. And one player that you might think is unpopular that I think you should you should bench is Rob Gronkowski. He's been limited in practice. I think he'll actually play. But my fear is, again, they're playing the Bills. They might just rest him. They might sit him out. Or he might play a quarter or two, and if they get a big lead, he comes out of the game. I just don't like his upside against Buffalo. Buffalo's been pretty good against tight ends. It just seems like... It just seems like a game where Gronkowski won't have a big game. He could he could be okay, but I think there's a lot of risk there. Plus, it's Monday night, so you're going to have to wait. I would much rather pick up Herndon or Watson, play them, then you know that they're going to play, um, and they should be in games where they should play the full four quarters and uh, have some value there. So that's who I have for my tight end start and sit. So, again, start Herndon, Watson, sit, Gronk. That'll do it for today's episode. Monday, we'll be back. We'll talk about who did well, who didn't do well. How about the players that I picked? I'll grade myself. I'll have my co-host back, Jeff Malinoff. We'll talk about the week of fantasy football again on Monday. And again, waiver ads and considerations you should make for your roster. Thank you for your time. Have a great weekend. And good luck to all your fantasy teams out there. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program